there are a variety of pricing models to consider and different factors to consider as you're pricing the products that you're going to be selling. Is pricing a part? Is it a key part of your positioning? If you're running a discount store, then that's part of your business structure is pricing items as low as possible. On the other hand, if you're a Neiman Marcus kind of store, you have made a name for yourself on having higher end pricing. So that would play into the decision making. What about the demand curve? I designed this t-shirt here because this issue at the moment is very critical. In higher education, we aren't thrilled to have guns on campus. So the demand curve may be very high for purchasing this shirt at the moment. The law goes into effect July 1st, and if it were overturned before that time and went away, well then the demand curve for this product would drop significantly and very instantly. So your pricing may be determined by the demand. I would be able to sell the shirt for $25 now, but if the issue goes away, I'll be lucky to get two bucks. Cost is a determinant for your pricing. Using cost as your pricing model and, and, and using that as a factor for determining can get you into trouble if you try to cut it too close. Because quite often, especially new entrepreneurs, tend to underestimate the actual cost of what things will will char or will cost them. Environmental factors are another consideration. Maybe manufacturing the product that you're making is more expensive because of something that you do. For example, in the manufacture of printer paper, you can sell printer paper for relative inexpensive amounts of money, but you get a higher price if it has recycled content. So you want that higher price point and you want to be able to advertise that you have that, but it does cost more to make paper that has been recycled because of the additional steps involved with bleaching and cleaning and getting the, the used material back to a usable format. So what do those factors, or how do those factors affect your pricing? Competition is another factor. If your competitors have a standard price point, then you will need to come near that price point or if you're going to have a different price point, you're going to have to justify it in other ways. Fair pricing comes into play as well. I can't quite charge $5 for a bottle of water should we have a water shortage because that's not considered fair and I could get in trouble for price gouging. So are there any specific limits that affect how you are allowed to price? Does profit sway come into your pricing construct? If you have a product that's highly volatile regarding its wholesale pricing that comes to you, you either pass that extreme high and low to your customer or you try to find a middle ground so that you're not constantly having to announce new pricing. At times your profit margin will sway toward a higher end and sometimes it will sway a little lower for you. But as long as you've made allowances for that frequent change, you should be good. And then finally, target market expectations. If I'm selling something that a consumer expects to pay a certain price for, I'm going to have to spend a lot of marketing money justifying a change in their expectations. So I'm better off for my t-shirt pricing it in a way that people expect and that way I don't have to spend extra funds and extra time educating my customers. With pricing objectives you're looking at how you're planning to sell your product. Is it something that's only going to be used short term like the t-shirt? So you want to hit hard and heavy then you're going to price for maximum profitability right off the bat. 
If you were looking for long-term growth, you may choose a long-term profit maximization. You make less per unit, but you're looking for that long-term customer connection. Maybe your goal is to maximize the number of items you're planning to sell, or the maximize the profit margin that you set. If you're planning a quick sale regarding your business, then being able to show high price or high numbers of sales or high profits can make you look good and set the stage for a higher sale. And then finally, it may come down to survival. In certain situations, like a price war, you may have to set a price that just barely covers your costs, but allows you to stay in operation while you ride out whatever is going on. The three most common pricing methods are cost plus pricing, target return pricing, and value-based pricing. With cost plus pricing, you look at the cost that it that it takes to make the product you're make that you're creating, and you add a percentage or a dollar figure above that. And if you have 200 different items, maybe you have a furniture store or an office supply store, each one might be marked up 20% or whatever percent. And that's the cost plus the percentage that covers. With target return pricing, you're looking for specific return on investment. So if you are borrowing $10,000 and you want to pay it back in one year plus interest, you would need to price individual units to be able to include that amount, including interest, as part of that profit. And then value-based pricing is when you're really not looking at the actual cost. And this is often used in in service industry. The actual cost of mowing my lawn might be $5, including uh, wear and tear on the lawn mower, fuel, etc., etc. But the value is in the person that is doing the lawn mowing and the value that I place on not having to do the mowing myself. And the value to me for not having to mow is $30. So it doesn't have anything to do with the cost. It has to do with what do I value that service or product to be worth. And then finally, psychological pricing. If you want to be the low-cost leader, then your positioning would be different because you want to grab that emotional connection with that person who's looking to save and be thrifty. That positioning would be very different if you are looking for the the buyer who's wanting high quality or limited availability. So compared to your competition, you need to look at your positioning and determine what's going to work best for you. And there are certain popular price points. You'll see price items priced at ninety nine ninety nine. It's just under a hundred dollars and it's an emotional discount. It's really only a penny, but it seems significant. When you see two different prices at a gas station, maybe one is three twenty five a gallon and one is three thirty a gallon. Well, I'm going to go to the 325 a gallon. That's going to save me an awful lot. And I'll put up with bad service or whatever because, gosh, I'm saving five cents a gallon. My car holds 20 gallons, so that's all of a dollar. But that emotional difference is more significant. Fair pricing is connected to the value that your end user feels is fair for the item that you are selling. If people feel gouged, they're less likely to leave the sale feeling good. So as you're looking at pricing, talk to people. Ask people, run items by, run your services by people. See what they, th what they think would be a fair price for what you are offering. Pricing is tricky. You'll likely change as time progresses and adjust and tighten on what works best for you and your business.